The European Union is taking a bold step forward by introducing the EU AI Act, a landmark legislation designed to shape the future of AI development and deployment. The funny thing is, almost everybody can see that AI is developing so fast and faster with companies racing to capture profits by developing the next big AI thing. But it's these same people that inherently understand the risk of rapid development leading to AI risks that could cause harm to humanity. We need safeguards against this before, well, this. This act stands as the first of its kind, aiming to establish a comprehensive legal framework that ensures AI technologies are developed and used in safe, transparent ways. By categorizing AI systems according to their risk levels, the EU AI Act introduces a nuanced approach to regulation, distinguishing between what's unacceptable and unacceptable risk, a high risk, and a lower risk application, and setting stringent requirements for those that could significantly impact individual rights and the safety of humanity. In this video, we're going to dive into how the EU launches the AI Act as a global benchmark for AI safety and ethics, setting the stage for how countries in the future around the world might want to approach this same amount of governance. For the past two years, the use of AI has evolved rapidly, becoming more than just a chat GP tool. And in response to this, the AI Act of the European Union comes into place, ready to put in safeguards and hopefully protect us from a rapidly expanding technology. At the heart of the EU Act is a revolutionary framework designed to assess and mitigate the risks associated with AI tech. This framework categorizes AI into three main tiers, which is unacceptable risk, high risk, and lower risk. So let's break them down. Starting with the most strict category, the Act identifies certain AI uses as posing unacceptable risks to society. So what is an unacceptable risk? Well, these include applications that could manipulate human behavior, exploit vulnerable groups, or conduct indiscriminate surveillance, leading to a total ban on these technologies. That makes sense, right? The next is a high-risk AI system. And high-risk AI systems are those involved in critical sectors like healthcare, law enforcement, and employment. Healthcare has a lot of problems that can be solved by AI, specifically with radiology or physician note-taking, but it also deals with incredibly sensitive patient information and can potentially manipulate physicians and caretakers to make inappropriate decisions. These need to be regulated so that there's a minimum standard for the kind of advice or the kind of treatment that an AI potentially administers. The Act mandates these applications to adhere to strict requirements including comprehensive risk assessments, high standards of data governance, and clear transparency measures to ensure accountability and public trust. It's pivotal that these risks prevent AI implementations to be more destructive than helpful, since a lot of people fear that AI will make changes detrimental to humanity as we give it more power. For AI systems classified to be lower risk, these regulations are much more relaxed, of course, and encourage innovation, while still safeguarding some public interests. Minimal risk applications, such as AI-enabled video games or spam filters, are largely exempt from regulatory constraints, reflecting the EU's balanced approach towards fostering technology advancements and protecting its citizens at the same time. The implications of these classifications are profound, setting a standard for how AI applications are evaluated and governed. By requiring high-risk AI systems to undergo rigorous testings, certifications, and compliance checks, the EU aims to prevent potential harms before they occur. Now this act could influence AI policy worldwide, and its potential effects on major tech hubs could be huge, but how are they going to do it? Well, countries all around the world, including big tech players like the United States and China, are keeping an eye on what the EU is doing and gathering and collaborating to try to build its own safeguards. 
The EU's detailed AI rules might lead to similar laws in other places as well, helping to create a more consistent way of managing AI worldwide. For tech companies that work globally, Google, Facebook, Meta, these new laws mean that they have to rethink how they build, design, and use AI. But following these rules could also give them a chance to enter the European market, which is known for caring a lot about consumer rights and privacies compared to other nations. The EU's AI law also pushes for AI to be used more ethically, and it asks companies to be clear, responsible, and safe in their AI work, aiming to make AI much more reliable and good for society. A key concern with the AI community is the potential for tough regulations to destroy innovation. Now, critics argue that heavy-handed politics could burden startups and smaller companies, making it challenging for smaller companies to compete with larger companies. The EU AI Act, however, takes a much simpler approach to this issue, recognizing the importance for fostering innovation along with the safeguards. And the Act provides exemptions for AI systems developed solely for research, development, or prototyping purposes. Moreover, the Act also encourages a culture of responsible innovation, where developers and companies are incentivized to integrate ethical considerations into their AI projects from the ground up. This approach not only aligns with the EU's values, but also promotes the development of AI tech. Now, moving forward, let's talk about how small companies and startups can thrive under this Act still. It might seem daunting at first or over-blooming, over-protective, but with all these new rules and classifications, there has to be some smart moves that companies can still make to stay innovative. First off, being open about how your AI works can be a huge plus for you. It's not just about ticking boxes for compliance, it's about building trust with your users and the EU. When people understand what your AI is doing and, and why and the support code behind it, they're more likely to support your product. Now next, put ethics at the core of your AI projects because this isn't just about avoiding trouble, it's about leading the charge to creating AI in a way that genuinely helps humanity and makes life better. Remember that collaboration is key here, so joining forces with other innovators or academia that are familiar with these laws can make it a lot easier and safer from having a solo engineer develop the next AI that can overthrow humanity. So, in conclusion, the EU AI Act pioneers ethical AI and establishes global safety and transparency. So, what do you think? Um, do you think we need these AI rules or do you think it's going to hinder us from maybe somebody developing some good AI tech that could really help? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, thanks for sharing your perspective and hit that like and subscribe button if you thought that this video was helpful. Thanks.